In this problem, we're going to work a circular motion problem using Newton's laws. At a carnival ride, a small airplane of mass M is suspended by a 5 meter rod as shown below. During the, rod, the ride, the airplane revolves at constant speed V in a horizontal circle of radius R. If during the rod, ride, the rod makes a 30 degree angle with respect to the vertical, what is the speed of the airplane in its period of rotation? Now, I don't have formulas that I know right off my head to solve this, so what I'm looking at is I've got to think about the physics and I have to set the problem up. So the physics here, uh, there's some physics I know. Let's see, for physics, I have circular motion. And I have Newton's laws. I know some equations that might be useful for this problem. Uh, so some equations. Obviously the sum of the forces is equal to ma. That's one, Newton's law. And also I know that the centripetal acceleration has got a magnitude equal to v squared over r. I also know that V can be found by the distance divided by the time since it's constant. And the easiest thing to do that is to find it for the distance going all the way around the circle, which would be 2 pi r divided by the time it takes to go around the circle, which is called the period, which is capital T. So I know those three formulas. I write them down. They might not be useful. They might be useful. But I try to put these things in and bring them out and put them on paper so my eyes can see them. Your eyes can help your brain. You basically see things. You use your eyes to solve problems all the time. So take advantage of that. Now I know certain other things. I know that this length here is 5 meters. I know that theta is 30 degrees. They did not tell me this. Radius. I might also want to draw something else that may not be so obvious to you. You have a line going like this. You have L which is 5 meters. But it looks to me like that line is connected right here and not on down. So it appears that there's a connection here and then there's some distance, some radius which I'll call A which is this distance right here and that the radius from my circle R is that side of the triangle where this should be a right angle had I done a better job drawing and this is about 30 degrees now I would need that radius And I can get it from trig, but it turns out only in as much as I knew A. So I note the following. The radius divided by L plus whatever this radius of this small plane, that happens to equal the sine of theta. And so the radius is equal to L plus A sine theta. I was not given A, the size of the of the plane. So that's a problem. I'm going to have to make an assumption here. I'm going to assume something. Assume A is much, much less than L. Now L is a 5 meter rod. If you don't have a feel for that, that's about equivalent to 5 yards or it's a little bit more than 15 feet. So I've seen these little rides that people set in and they're not 30 feet across so they're probably quite a bit less than that so this is probably a reasonable approximation to make. If I make that assumption then R is approximately L sine of the angle. So I write all these things down and I get ready to start trying to solve this problem. 
first thing to do is since I don't have anything else I know right off my head is to start with something that can never be false and something that I'm guaranteed is going to be true is that Newton's second law holds. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram. I'll make my pen a little bigger. So there's my drawing of my diagram. There is a tension force, T. There is a W force, right like this. So I'm doing 1F, W. A, there is no applied, normal, it's not touching on any surface. T, there is tension in the rope. F, friction, we're neglecting air drag. So there's no friction, no sliding friction. Uh, I go up here and get myself uh, a different pin. I'll make myself a little axis. And this is one of the important steps in solving this problem. To make the math easier, I'm going to put one of my axis along the radius. The thing axis I'm putting along the radius is the x axis. So the acceleration along x is going to be the centripetal acceleration and it's going to point to the center of the circle. Now, I want to write one more thing and that is I need this angle. And looking at this, may be hard to figure out what angle you have. But if you thought of having your axis like this, this angle and this angle theta have to be equal. There's a famous line in geometry that says if you have two parallel lines, the green line and this cord, and if those two lines are cut by a transversal, which is what this is, alternating interior, this is an interior angle, it's inside the two parallel lines, alternating interior angles are congruent. So this angle and this angle have to be the same. Now, we have that set up. We now write Newton's laws. Sum of the forces in x is mAx. Sum of the forces in y is mAy. Forces in x, I have minus t times the sine of theta is equal to m and the acceleration is the centripetal acceleration so it's v squared over r and it points in the minus x direction toward the center of the circle. Over on this end the acceleration is zero. It's not taking off flying upwards. It's going around in a plane. So its velocity is zero in the y direction and it stays zero so there's no acceleration. This tells me that T cosine theta minus W is zero. Now what I want to do is I want to combine those two equations. And the best way to do that when you have equations with trig functions like this called transcendental equations is to divide the two equations thereby eliminating this unknown tension. So I get minus sine theta over cosine theta is equal to minus m v squared over r and then I also have weight. So if you miss that I simply have taken this equation here and divide it into that. So I'll call that equation 1, this equation 2. So 1 divided by 2 gives you equation 3. I can kill the minus signs. I also can see that sine over cosine is tangent, which is mv squared over r, and weight is mg. And I can kill the mass, so you don't need to know the mass. Now what were they asking me for? They were asking me for V. Alright. So V squared V squared is equal to R G tan of theta. 
So V is the square root of R G tan theta, but I don't know R. Oh yeah, I have a formula right up here, L sine theta. So I have L G sine theta tan theta. So now all I need to do is just put some numbers in here. Uh, I have 5 meters, 9.8 meters per second squared, sine of the angle, let me see what the angle was, I forgot what it was, it was 30 degrees. Tan of 30. Well, see, sine of 30 is a half. 5 times 10 is 50. 50 divided by a half, that's 25. So it's roughly 5 times the tan of 30. And a tan of 30 is less than 1, so it'll be less than 5. I'll take my calculator. Eight times sine of thirty times tan of thirty three point seven six meters per second. That answers the first part of the problem. The second part of the problem I'm going to take on the next video and take this equation right here and knowing R, knowing V, I'm going to solve for the period which is T. I'll see that on the next video.